In this presentation, we will take a look at a balance sheet report, one of our standard types of report, the financial statement type of reports. Time to engage with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Sage 50 accounting practice file with the Bellwether Garden Supplies. We're in the customers and uh, sales section. We're going to be going down to the reports now. So I'm going to go to the reports drop down up top and then go on down to the financial statements. That's going to be our major reports. We're considering here the uh, balance sheet, the balance sheet report. Note that we're not going to get into a lot of detail in the formatting of the report. There's some different ways that we can format it. One is to export it to Excel, and we will take a look at the exporting feature. However, we also have the intelligence reporting, which is an added feature, but it's one that can be very useful and give you some flexibility. So we're going to go over just basically the standard types of reports, maybe go into like the intelligence reporting to uh, alter or adjust those reports at a later time. So just note that the standard kind of layout that you're going to have with the reports is that you have the reports that are going to say standard, right? These are the out of the box, as they call them, the out of the box reports. Then you could take those reports and, of course, build other types of reports on them with the use of resources within the report, with use of Excel. And uh, if you want to do more formatting with them, the intelligence reporting gives you a lot of flexibility to do that. So if you were to copy a report, then you're going to have a report with a little wrench here that's going to say that you have adjusted or have some uh, other report that you've made from the standard report. So our goal here is just to take a look at the standard reports, take a look at the out of the box type of reports, and then the printing options and so on with those reports and kind of group those reports together as we as if we were going to be preparing them or presenting them to somebody else just practicing that process. So we're going to go into the balance sheet here. Let's go to open up the balance sheet report. We have our options up top. We have the time frame on the current period. We can pick a range if we so choose. And then we have uh, the current uh, three periods default settings i'm going to be picking the current period then we have the print page numbers so if you want page numbers you can print them show zero amounts uh, i'm going to not show zero amounts if you want to see the zero amounts you may want to do that when you want to go into the report and look at the more detail and possibly drill down using the zoom feature can be very useful in those cases to use the zero amounts note that the financial statements there's kind of two purposes you have on the financial statements one if you're if you're putting together the financial statements then you're using it as, as one of your primary documents to see what you know your data input is doing. So when you do data input, you're going to be bouncing back over to the financial statements as we will do often and have done uh, already <laughs> uh, when we put uh, do the data input. And then, of course, we need the financial statements for display purposes to provide to somebody else, whoever is going to need them at the end of the time period, possibly internal management reports. We want to group the financial statements in such a way that they look nice for them, as well as people outside of the organization we would need the financial statements there. So there's kind of two goals you have with the financial statements. One, they're going to be one of the primary uh, reports you're going to be bouncing back and forth from. And two, of course, for the presentational purposes. Then we have the print all word uh, capitalized, if you so choose, and then the center on page, if we so choose. Right margin, left margin, number of copies. You can obviously have the number of copies here. So I'm going to say OK. And then here's going to be our standard balance sheet. So standard balance sheet, we've got the name up top. We've got uh, the balance sheet. And then the as of date, of course, noting that the balance sheet only has one date on it because we're not talking about a time frame. We are talking about a point in time. So this is as of the end of March in this case. So then we have the accounts. They're going to be broken out to the, to the standard kind of uh, balance sheet reporting. That being the current assets being broken out, that, those being the more liquid type of assets. And then we have uh, the property plant and equipment, depreciable assets, PP&E type of assets. Then we have the other assets. So these are going to be kind of like the long-term assets that are not the property, plant, and equipment. We have the subtotals for each of those sections. And then we have the uh, total other assets down here. And then we have the total assets at the 505, 715. Then we have the liabilities and uh, the capital, the other side here. Note, of course, when you think about the equity section, you could think about it as equity. You could think about it as capital. It really depends on the type of organization that uh, you will be dealing with. Are you dealing with a partnership or are we dealing with a company? So if we go back down, we're going to say that uh, we have then the current liabilities. Current liabilities, those do within a year's time period. That's going to be uh, the total current liabilities subtotal. Then those long-term liabilities, those do after a year, such as a note payable. And then we have the capital. So again, when you think about the capital, you might think of it as equity. You might think of it to, as capital. Just remember the terminology. Uh, if you think about it, out it as a whole, the capital or the equity section as a whole, it represents the assets minus the liabilities. So it re represents kind of like the, the 
owner's claim to uh, the resources of the company. And so, and so it, any kind of, of, of way you're going to put the capital together, you can kind of think of capital as a whole in that, in that way. Now, obviously, then if you're talking about a partnership, you're going to have multiple partners that are going to own some of that capital that you're going to have to uh, deviate between or split up in some way between those partners. If you're talking about a corporation, then there's going to be stocks, such as the common stock here, right? And that's going to be in the investment, the paid in capital. Those are kind of like the initial investments, common stock and paid in capital. And then you've got the retained earnings, which is the accumulation of income over time that has accumulated minus any dividends that have been paid out. So that's going to be the, the setup there. And, and when you deviate, when you distribute between the owners, then of course, the common owners are basically have shares and the shares are all the same in nature. And therefore, uh, you could you can easily, you know, deviate just depending on the, the basis of the shares. So there we have that. And then that's going to be the total capital. And then, of course, the total liabilities and capital are going to be matching out to the uh, assets. Now, then we have in the capital section, the net income. So you'll note they actually included a net income in here. Now, why would they do that? The net income is actually on the income statement. So they're kind of they're basically saying, hey, hey, look, the balance sheet is tied into the income statement by the net income number. So if we were to open an income statement just to check it, we'll take a look at the income statement in more detail later. But just to take a look at it, if we take a look at the income statement, opening up the income statement, I'm going to go for the current period. I'm not going to show the zero amounts and we're going to say OK. And then scroll down uh, to the bottom of the income statement. We're at the year to date 21,925. Uh, so 21,925. If I go back over to the uh, balance sheet, then 21,925. So that's how you can kind of think of the income statement and the balance sheet are tied together. These are the financial statements. They represent basically all the major uh, general ledger accounts. And the balance sheet is as of a point in time. The income statement is, in essence, a part of the equity section. You can think of it in that way. It's giving a timing. It's breaking out the time frame of the equity section. How did we do last year? So, and that's going to be represented here. They're representing that in the balance sheet with that 21,925. So uh, as far as formatting goes, we can obviously save this information. We can print the information. We can go back in to the options for it and take a look at the options related to it. We have the setup, we have the hide. I'm not gonna get into those. We got the email, we have Excel, so we can email it to someone. Obviously we can Excel, uh, create Excel, and that's what we will do. We'll practice doing these options up top. And then we're in the preview. And then we have the design. And this is one way that you can basically alter or customize the report, but it's pretty technical within uh, this setup to alter the report. So I'm not gonna go into uh, the design set up here. I will point out that uh, the design, another way you can you can take a look at that report is to go through the uh, intelligence report. And so those are kind of the two ways that you can alter the reports. If you go into the design settings, again, it's a, it's a little bit more kind of uh, technically put together. And when you do have that more technical uh, nature of it, you may be able to do more things with it, right? You have more flexibility than you might have in some other types of software that basically have the kind of standard setup that you can you can adjust you can adjust between you know toggle between two different settings and whatnot uh versus basically creating what you have which, which means you can have a lot more options a lot more options usually makes it more complex to some degree as well so i'm not going to get and spend a lot of time on the design uh here at this point we're just going to be reviewing the reports we have to find help and then refresh so every time you adjust something uh, if it doesn't adjust automatically, and this is what I would use a lot because if you're going to be making adjustments to the financial statements or entering data, then you want to be jumping back to the balance sheet all the time just so you understand it, refresh the report, see what happened with it. Now I'm going to be printing these out. I'm going to be printing these as we go. And remember the options you have are to email it to somebody. Great if it's only one report. However, if you have multiple reports, then uh, you may want to use it some other fashion to do it, to make an attachment. You can give a PDF to somebody, uh, but uh, if you have multiple reports, even attaching multiple PDFs might not be as good. And you can use Excel to basically help you to print multiple reports and collate them together, great tool, or to make one PDF file with multiple reports. So I'm going to use these, these tools to do that. And I'm also going to use the Qt PDF printer to do this. So I'm going to, as we go through these presentations, we'll keep on printing these reports. We'll put them into the same Excel uh, worksheet and we'll imagine that we're going to be giving these reports to a supervisor or a client. So how can we group this information together and make it look nice? Presentation is, of course, half the, 
half the job here. So I'm going to say I'm going to print it as a PDF, but I'm not going to use the PDF because I want to practice using that cute PDF printer. So again, I'm going to print it to a printer here and it's going to be a cute PDF printer. This is a free printer. It, it works well for me. I don't have any affiliation with them, but it's a, it's a printer that can work well. I suggest having some kind of PDF printer so that you can use this option for this program and for any kind of program whenever you want to print something as a PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and print this. It's going to ask me where do we want to put it. And I'm going to say, I'll tell you where we want to put it. And we're going to, so I'm going to put it here in the uh, Sage 50 Cow uh, docs. I know I should correct the spelling. It probably drives people crazy, but that's okay. I'm going to keep it here for now. We're going to go in the section two. We're going to be in the section two. And then I'm just going to create the balance sheet. So I'm going to create it as a PDF and that'll print it out as a PDF. The other option, I'm going to use the Excel. I'm going to export this to Excel. And as we create more reports, we'll put them into the Excel document. This time, I'm not going to add it to a worksheet. I'm going to say, hey, I'd like to create a new workbook and make this new worksheet within it. So I'm going to open this one up and it should then open up Excel. Note, of course, that you would have to have Excel to do this. There's no added integration, however. I didn't have to do anything special to integrate with Excel. You can export it to Excel. However, any changes that you put in Excel then won't be reflected uh, next time you open up uh, another another report. So Excel, of course, gives you a lot of options that you can print it to Excel and make any changes that you want. Uh, the question then is with some of the integrations is how can you export it to Excel and then have some of those changes be um, be saved so that you don't have to regenerate the reports, right? So you want the flexibility of Excel and you'd like it to be able to be saved. So in any case, this is the standard kind of uh, format that you can basically just export it to Excel and it's great and you can use this this tool then to make any kind of adjustments that you need with this raw data now i'm going to save it i'm not going to save it as a balance sheet report i'm going to save it just as the financial statements and as we go through the rest of the financial statements we'll do that same process of just saving these to uh the these worksheets so that we can consider how we can group them together and then provide them to somebody so i'm going to go ahead and browse and say where do i want to put this so I'm going to put them in the section two folder again, and I'm going to call this, I'm just going to call this uh, financial statements. So let's put that in there, financial statements, like that. And then I'm going to say save. So we have that. And then I'm going to close this back out. And let's just check out uh, what we have so far. I'm going to close that. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to minimize that. And then here's our folder. So I'm gonna open up the folder and then I'm gonna pull it up to the window that we can see it in up here. So there's the window. And then I'm gonna open up, we're in section two and let's view it as a large, a large icon. So now we have the financial statement and uh, the balance sheet. So as we create more documents, then we'll, we'll list them over here and then we'll also include them in our reports and think about how we can print those if we need to print them or provide them to someone else as easily and efficiently as possible. That's it for now. Let's get out of here.